Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about future major transitions in evolution. Evolution has capabilities that allow it to explore design space in areas adjacent to existing gene pools. How good an ecosystem is at doing that is sometimes referred to as its evolvability, and this video is about the future evolution of evolvability. Nature's capabilities in this area have improved gradually over time as useful technology for performing such exploration has accumulated. Previous milestones in the area include cell membranes, which act as insulations against environmental perturbations, chromosomes, which allow genes to cooperate and build complexity, sexual recombination, which allows independent innovations to be combined, cooperation, which involves avoiding wasting valuable resources in fighting each other, immune systems, which allow organisms to grow large in comparison to their pathogens, and nervous systems, which represent a writable information storage and processing system that enhances an organism's developmental plasticity. Daniel Bennett says it takes some heavy lifting in the form of research and development in order to explore design space adjacent to existing gene pools. That heavy lifting requires what he calls cranes. The basic idea he's talking about is illustrated in this video. So here's our cascade of cranes. By the way, at around the same time I was writing about this, a wonderful book was published by one of my favorite evolutionary biologists, John Maynard Smith, writing with the uh, Hungarian uh, scientist, Ursh Zathmeri, the major transitions in evolution. And each one of those major transitions is one of my cranes. So if you're a biologist and you know about John Maynard Smith's work, then you have a simple translation of my term crane, it's a, it's a Maynard Smith, Zathmeri transition. Transitions in evolution are topical because a major evolutionary transition appears to be currently underway. It started with the origin of brains, which exhibit developmental plasticity and adaptation during a single lifetime. However, brains are mortal. What they really needed was a way to pass on their hard-won information to offspring. Wiring that information into DNA would be an obvious method, but it was not the solution that nature came up with. Instead, a second inheritance channel was established. Information was no longer being passed from one generation to the next, almost entirely by nucleic acids. Some of it started being passed down the generations in the form of human culture. First, it was chanting and hymns, but after a while, writing appeared, and then it was printing presses, CDs, DVDs, and a plethora of other media. The new media have had a dramatic effect on evolution. They are user-modifiable, allowing for rapid change without any agents dying in the process. Previously, mutations had mostly been an undirected process, but now intelligent agents can make modifications at will. Deductive and inductive reasoning came to the forefront. Intelligent design could be employed. The tools of science, technology and engineering could be used to design the next generation. The ramifications of this are currently playing out. The changes so far have been dramatic. Life has gone to the moon, caused the planet to glow at night, and built fantastic skyscrapers, bridges, dams and tunnels, and the like of which have never been seen before. However, the true extent of the changes has yet to be seen, since most of them still lie in the future. It seems likely that today's genotype and phenotype technologies will be completely replaced. A genetic takeover seems likely to lead to the end of the DNA protein era. Mainstream evolutionary theory has not yet caught up with these modern developments, and the textbooks on the subject need rewriting to include deliberate mutations and intelligent design as fundamental mechanisms of evolutionary change. While evolutionary theory is being updated, it seems like a suitable time to look forwards to see what other developments and shifts might occur in the future. One clear possibility would be a shift to self-directed evolution in a population with only one organism in it. That shift has not happened yet, but there is a trend towards large organism size, and another that favours large-scale social systems. Humans are showing signs of development into a social species, and this trend might well yet culminate in the formation of a universal organism. Such an organism might well reduce the force of natural selection to low levels, and evolution would then proceed mostly in the directions the superorganism dictated. I expect that, though evolvability might continue to increase, there won't be that many more moments quite as dramatic as the current shift in the future. In science, it is hard for modern-day scientists to compete with Darwin or Newton. Scientists today are rather less likely to make grand discoveries like those of their forefathers. I expect we'll see a similar thing with, with evolvability, 
the biggest discoveries and the most significant milestones will happen relatively early on. However, assuming that progressive adaptation continues, it does seem reasonable to expect that living systems will still spend most of their time on adaptive peaks, with occasional leaps across design space to the lower slopes of higher peaks. So, there will probably be future dramatic transitions as well, even if these don't correspond to big changes in the underlying dynamics of the evolutionary process. Enjoy!